So Robert's on the saw. There's a lot of cutting to be done. Uh, we have six purlins plus the edge purlin for each of these. It's 24 on center. It's a 36 foot roof. So that's a lot of wood that needs to be cut and prepared. So these are the LSLs uh, that Robert's actually got them already cut. I did a quick test cut on this one through the table saw. I'm putting on basically a 412 pitch, which I think is like 18 point something degrees. And uh, it went through pretty well. These guys will be going uh, right on the edge there, acting like the edge purlins and provide a lot of rigidity for the overhang. Robert's still working his way through a monster cut list and I'm going to start putting on the edge purlins here. Uh, let me show you uh, what it looks like from the top. So if you look straight down, that's a 36 foot wall there. My gosh, that's pretty darn straight. There's not much deflection there at all. So I, I'm really pleased with that. One enigma, uh, we lost an inch or gained an inch elsewhere. I, I don't really know. Um, I haven't remeasured all these LVLs. Yeah, it looks like we lost an inch. <laughs> I mean, these walls are perfectly straight. Like the wall is certainly not an inch off. Maybe one of these LVLs isn't cut exactly right or maybe my math is wrong. That's probably the most likely. I probably just read something wrong from the SketchUp drawing. The good news is, I mean, this corner isn't that crazy important. But anyway, we're going to cut an inch and just stick it in there as a, as a shim. It'll give the sheathing something to hold against. Like the other one, this turned out really well. Um, if you look right down it, I mean, wow. <laughs> Robert, where we double shimmed, is actually bulging a little bit, but nothing that is gonna make me lose sleep. This one, unlike the other one, uh, is only off by uh, a quarter inch. Uh, the building is a quarter inch too big down here and an inch too big down there, which is really surprising. I'm really confused as to how we gained three quarters of an inch down there, um, but the building is clearly no longer perfectly square. It is an inch longer on one side than the other. It'll be our secret though. <laughs> I don't think anyone will ever know because the walls look pretty straight to me.
Flutter dog. Hi, baby. <gasps> what? What? So today we're fighting some rain. Hasn't happened yet, but it feels like it will, and the forecast says maybe. So I'm gonna start by pre-assembling some of the purlins for the office and porch. We're doing the purlins all in line. Basically we have uh, shorter ones on the end bay there, and then the long ones extend the two middle bays. Finally, another set of short ones on this bay. They'll all be kind of joined together and overlapped by a bunch of uh, smaller pieces around two to three feet. So we're doing this all with legs. I have 60 penny nails for it, but frankly, I find legs a lot easier. times like this that I realize we've got to get this barn covered because this is not a toad pound. The toads think otherwise. Normally for drilling in these long lag bolts, uh, we've found the more powerful 3 8 inch driver to be um, a better choice. But I think I am starting to uh, strip out this bit. Uh, it's just not gripping like it used to. So I might try uh, the baby driver with, a, uh, with an appropriate bit on it. We'll bring both out, see which one's performing better. Baby driver worked great for this. Uh, no problems whatsoever driving these. All the purlins are assembled, loaded with leg screws. Attachment boards are all nailed on, at least one aside. So we'll throw up the ends first. We want them to be butted up uh, against the outside of the building here. And then with those in place, uh, we'll be able to set the long purlins resting right up against these blocks here. 